All right, all right. Okay, let me, let me get right to it. This video is for the subscribers, for the viewers, and those who left comments. I'm re responding to all your questions. I'm responding to the things that you requested that I do a video on. And um, it's going to be some surprises in there, some things that popped up that I wouldn't wear up on the beginning and the end. But I'm fishing in there, and I'm talking about the tips, and uh, I'm talking about different pointers, things to think about um, along with fishing. So bear with it. I'm going to get right into the video. Please hit like. Please subscribe if you haven't. We're going to have way more videos. Um, so just just stay with us. Just stay with us. Crappie Town USA. We a team, and we sticking together like family. All right, y'all. See you in a minute. People, I hope you can hear me. It's a lot of traffic, but I just came across a young lady. Very interesting. Struck up a conversation. We've been talking for a little while, and I want you to meet her. All right. So Crappie Town USA, baby family. I want you to meet Denver. Very interesting lady. Uh, let's see. How did? Hold on. Let's see if we can. What's the dog's name? Oh, that's Hank Williams. All right, well, beat Hank over there. There, Hank. Pit bull. Uh, yeah, he's a pit mix. All right, so don't 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 y'all start nothing. Don't start nothing. They got a pit bull over here. <laughs> Look at that yep. vicious <laughs> So Denver here, okay, I'm going to just ask a couple questions. This is not scripted, y'all. This is not scripted. Okay, so you say you're coming from, where are you coming from? How did you get all the way here in Indiana? Um, well, I'm coming from Georgia, Georgia, and then I got picked up by a school bus full of hippies who brought me to a rainbow gathering yeah. in eastern Kentucky, and uh, then I... Came back up here, yeah. hitchhiking, caught a few trains, Ooh. and uh, now I'm probably going to do a whole lot of walking. Nobody <laughs> picks up See, come on, Indiana, where y'all at? Yeah, I on. came over from Ohio, and I'm sitting here talking to Denver. Cool young lady, got the guitar going. Oh, yeah. Ain't nothing like country living, y'all. Ain't nothing like it. I was on my way going fishing. And um, I noticed her, and I just had to talk to her and see what was going on. And it, I knew she was going to be interested. I just knew it. I knew it. So I appreciate her taking the time out. She's okay with being on YouTube. And I want to thank y'all for tuning, tuning in. So you just better give me one more house. Back in the day with my uncle Jim. Back in the day when I could fill out a moonshine. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's awesome. right. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, indeed. Crappy Town USA, baby. <laughs> All right, Denver. What we gonna do on behalf of Crappy Town USA, baby, on behalf of Crappy Sniper Channel, we are gonna help her out. All right. We gonna put that on camera because that ain't what it's all about. So, be right back with you. We for the, we gonna do this as a family. That's what we do. It ain't all about catching fish. It's about helping people. All right. Hello, people. Good morning, America. Good morning, nature. What I have here is a cane pole, a bamboo pole, old school. When I was little, this is what my aunt and my grandmother used to fish with. They used to catch bluegills and crappies with these, and I'm going to give it a whirl. Go old school, try with a cane pole. I may not stick with it all day, but I do want to try to get at least first fish with a cane pole in honor of my grandmother who taught me how to fish and my aunt who taught her how to fish. All right? We're going to give it a whirl and we're going to see what happens. Just out here for a quick little run and uh, see what we can do. All right? Crappy Town USA, baby! Crappy Town USA. Let's do it. <sighs> 
I'm all set. Uh, I got my my radio out here today. Like I said, this is for old school. I never I never do radios. Well, I have, but it's been probably a couple years. But I got the radio out here in remembrance of my childhood fishing days with my grandmother and my aunt. My grandmother passed away. My aunt is um, in Illinois. And uh, this is this is honor to them. My first cast, my first fish. I got to get it the way they did it. Cane pole, radio playing. Okay, but I got my my regular poles out here. Got my minnows with my freeze pack in there. Tweezers, kit, and some change. Just in case I got to switch up. I know I said I wasn't coming out here for all of that. And then I got my stool. Okay. Got my stool because this time I'm going to sit down a little bit. I'm going to do like they did. They sat down. They came fish. Let's go ahead and try it. Set. I got my little jig right here. Chartreuse with a little silver in it. And um, black body with a green head with a wax worm on it. And I'm going to get the cane pole. I have, I'm telling you, it's been years. I probably was eight years old since the last time I used it. Well, maybe maybe ten. Probably was ten years old last time I used a cane pole. So we're going to go for it, all right? Is up to $302 million. And the next is there you go. Got back in the water. Let's try it again. All right. All right, first fish on the cane pole. On the cane pole, bluegill. Wasn't big, but it did it. I'm done with the cane pole. I'm back on mine. Man, that's harder than it's harder than it looks, especially when you're in a tight quarter and you can't reel the line in or nothing like that. It requires some technique. I got to give them honor and respect to cane pole users and uh, of today and of yesterday. That's that's pretty that's pretty difficult to deal with. You know that's why you never see him agitated after an at bat if he made an out or something, and then they'd say, "Oh man, his hamstring's tight. He can't play against the Angels for the next three days." And Another bluegill. Another bluegill. Not what I'm looking for. Another bluegill. I gotta go out in this water. I'm losing way too many bobbers. I ain't got too many more of that size. I'm gonna have to get out there and get this bobber. That's what I'm about to do. Call me cheap. Hey, call me petty if you want. I'm going in. Right, people. I didn't caught my first rock bass in 30 years. More like 20. Little rock bass. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting a bite. I'll fit. Hold on. Don't play with me. I'm trying to do something. Don't play with me. All right. You know how they do. You know how they do. I'm trying to do something, and then they're going to try to bite. I've been sitting here waiting on a bite for the longest, and they didn't bite. I'm trying to answer a few questions, okay? I have been getting <clears throat> a lot of questions about um, how do I hook my minnow, and how do I um, rig my pole? How is it How is it rigged? Okay, so here's what I do. I'm going to try to be as informational as I possibly can but as concise at the same time 
we'll we'll see how that works out. Okay, here it is. Now, for you that already know this, fast forward or whatever, okay? Because I this, this I don't even want to hear it, okay? Because people get crazy sometimes. Man, we already know how to put a hook on a pole, man. We already know how to put a barber on, man. This is not for anybody that knows how to do it. There are some people that love fishing but like to know how you doing it, how you getting your... I want to know, too. Shoot, I've been fishing for 30 years. And shoot, if you got a way you catching them and I ain't been able to catch them, I want to hear what you got to say. Shoot, I don't care how long I've been fishing. You always can stand to learn some or try something new or, hey, you know, whatever. But let me let me go on ahead and get to my point. Listen, okay, I always cut off the last, like if I had it, if it broke off. I'm always going, okay, I'm going to always cut that off, okay? I don't want no curly parts on my line. I want no fraying or none of that, okay? Then... Stopper. Get yourself a stopper, a bobber stopper. I use slip bobbers, okay? So I get yourself a bobber stopper. And basically all you're doing, I don't like the string. I don't like the string one because the string one, after it get wet so many times, it starts to tear up and it starts to easily move. So the rubber stoppers are the best ones. And try to get some, the small ones, okay? Get the small ones. They, they go through your guides much easier. They slide through your pole much easier. You just slip that through there, through that little loop that it has, bend this line down, okay? Then you just slide your little rubber stopper onto your line. So it's onto my line, okay? And I'm, I, I take it up about two feet, okay? After that, I get my, my slip bobber, and I slide the line through my slip bobber, okay? Then I get my split shot. This is a number four. This is pretty much one of the heavy ones. Like a lot of people wouldn't recommend it because they don't like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know what's going on out here, but hold on, give me a second. I don't know what's going on with this pole. Don't come back without a fish, okay? Don't come back without a fish. You have your stopper on, okay? Once you have your stopper on, and then you put your um, slip bobber on, okay? And then what I like to do is go ahead and put my... What I like to do is go ahead and put my... Um, my split shot on. And I use removable split shots. They have non-removable. I use removable because depending on where I'm at, I may change the weight. I may go lighter or I may want to go heavier. But this is a number four 20 pack. Okay. Weight. I put that on there right now. And basically what I do, I'll bite it down. I don't bite it down real hard. I do that just to keep this from falling off while I put my hook on. Okay. Through the eye, well, let me rephrase. I put the line through the through the eye of the hook. With the short end, I wrap it around about seven times. There's several different types of there are seven different types of ways to tie a hook. I mean, it's this is several different ways. This is my quickest way. I just do that. I don't even really count it to be honest with you. I just do it until it feel right. But I don't do no less than six. Then I take it through the, the, the hole at the bottom, the loop at the bottom. Every now and then, depending on what I'm doing, every now and then, I take it through the other loop. But for right now, I'm not going to do that, okay? Just going to take it first through that through that first loop at the end of the, um, the hook. And then I just pull it tight, okay? That's how I do it. I leave a little bit off. Now I don't I don't put I don't cut that off. I leave it there because you get a nice size fish on there. You want you want at least some line sticking out. You don't want that fish to pull that where it might come loose, okay? Just in case. It's a tight knot, but I leave a little string. That's just for my own little um safety measure that I feel comfortable with. I don't leave a long string, but I cut it a little bit. Then I pull this split shot down. I let the split shot be maybe six inches from the hook. That gives the middle time. 
that gives the minnow some play room so he can draw. So if you want it to be a foot, go ahead and put your stopper at about 16 inches. Okay, that's just being technical. Now, the other question was about the way I hook my minnow. About 20 years ago, I started, I'm literally, for real. About 20 years ago, I started hooking my minnows in the tail. I'm going to tell you why. Now, some people can dispute this. Some people can dispute this, but I'm going to tell you why. For me, they live longer. For me, they're more active, okay? They're way more active to me. Uh, let me just put it this way. Let me hook a hook in your head, okay? And let me see how long you last kicking and, 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 and swimming and, 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 and how long you last. But if I hook it in your foot, it, it may hurt a little bit, but I bet you last longer. Okay, think about it for a second. Okay, the second reason why I hook them through the tail is because of the type of fish that I'm trying to catch. Listen, I'm catching crappies. Crappies bite going upward, okay? When you have your minnow on there, the minnow is pretty much facing downward or to the side, okay? Because if he's hooking his tail, he's he's go, his head is going, his body, he's going to pull his weight up to be this way or down this way. And the crappie is looking up at him, okay? Now, if I have it hooked in his head, crappies eat the head first. They always eat head first, predominantly, okay? Predominantly, that's what they do. They eat the head first. So, if I hook him through the head, when he bites it, you're going to have to be quick draw McCraw because as soon as he hit that head, he already know that something is in the fish head. He already know it's in the head. So either he's going to have to swallow that hook and hook himself or you're going to have to basically have your pole in your hand, okay, for, for the most part. It makes you have to react much faster when it's hooked in his head because they bite the head first. And there's an unnatural feel to it when they bite it. I'm not saying I know people catch fish like that all the time. Been fishing like that for 50 years, man. I've been catching fish with hooking my minnows in the head for 50 years. And I ain't never missed one crappie. Keep doing it. I'm just telling you how I'm catching them because it has a lot to do with how you fish. Okay? How I fish, I do a lot of stuff. I'm always moving. I'm always doing something. So for me, I can lay my pole down. And I can see my pole getting a bite. Now, I'm going to be swift about doing it, but I can probably make it over there to get my pole. You know why? Because it's hooked in his tail. But when, he bite, when he's biting the head of the fish and it's hooked in his tail, the, t the, the hook is going to be horizontal with the bite. Okay? So that means when he bites that head, he's going to pull that hook right into his mouth unknowingly. You know why? Because the, the hook becomes the tail. So by the time he has it all the way down there, he has it all the way down there. All I do is pull up and now I set the hook. That's why I like the tail better versus the head. The head, when he bites it, he is unnatural because he's going to feel that hook immediately because that hook is going to change directions because it's in his head. If that makes any sense. Okay. Now, let me hook, let me hook one and I'm going to show you. Let me get a big one so you can see. Okay, look. I'm going to tell you. Now, look. I hook him about right there. I don't go no, no closer to the tail than right there. Okay? So, I take it. I push down on it like this. Be careful not to poke yourself. I leave myself like I got a little opening right there that the hook will come right through. If you can see that. See? The hook come right through there between my hands. Now, look at him. See? He going to keep doing that in the water. He going to keep doing that. Look at that. He's going to keep doing it. See, as you can see, since crappies bite, you see how he keep diving his head down? See, when the crappies see that, it tears his head off if they in there. See that? See, he'll never know that hook is onto that fish until he's hooked because the way the hook is going parallel with the body of the minnow. It's going parallel with the body of the minnow.
So that way, when that crappie hit it, he'll never know the hook. Hooking them in the head, you also have to be mindful of what size hook you use. Even in the tail as well, but you have to be more concerned about that when you're hooking them in the head. The size hook make a big difference. You use one of them number ones or one, and one slash zeros, you probably are killing real quick in the head. That's another reason why I don't really like sticking them in the head, but we're going to give it a whirl and see. Looks in the head. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the bucket. I'm not seeing nothing. Let me see. They might have killed them already. Look at that. That's pathetic. See, hey, there he go. He kicking a little bit. Come on, give us something. See, it's not as violent though. See, it's not as violent. See, look at that. He's just going straight down. Probably got a headache, you know. Probably got a headache. Immediately, he understands that something is in that fish or something's wrong. Immediately. Now, the ones that just gump it, that's why they get caught. It's not that they're not aware of it. It's just that they're getting caught. But... But, uh, there you go. Give us something. See, it ain't too much. See, but if you can look at that and tell, if, if crappies bite head first, that hook is in the way. So it's an unnatural, it's an unnatural, um, it's an unnatural feeling and an unnatural bite. It would be like, it would be like, it would be like how you, okay, let's say, for instance, you eating a, a fish. They tell you the fish is filleted, right? Look at how quick you recognize there's a bone in it. You know why? Because you know it ain't supposed to be one in it. That's how come you recognize it real quick. You recognize it real quick because you know that that's not what you was expecting. He's not expecting a bone in his meal either. <laughs> bone meaning hook. Hold on, hold on. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. See? See how they try to get you when you're doing something. Uh-huh. And that was on... Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Yeah, that's it right there. That's what I'm talking about. Do something. So you try to do something. See how he tried to get me? Did you see how he tried to get me? Mm-hmm. I just happened to look out the corner of my eye, my peripheral. Tried to get me. They do it. I'm telling you, they'll do it. But okay, what I was saying was get your barber stopper, your split shot that's removable in case you need to change the weight, depending on the cover you're in. Also, your it makes a difference what size barber you have. Okay, if you got a small barber, you're gonna need small weight. If um, you have a larger bobber or cork um, or float you're gonna need um, a larger weight okay so just remember that and I put my split shot about six inches from the hook to give the minnow some room to dance around and then also um, and also uh, hold on you fit to do it again You gotta watch these things, man. They, they, I don't know, man. They got spies on the ground or something. Cause I don't know how they know when you're doing something, but they don't. So. Oh. Y'all saw that? You saw it. Okay. 
Come here. Yep, pink jig right in between them sticks. I hope the camera was focused correctly. Just this little thing, they can tow it up. That calls for a drink. Chad. I caught some of these in my net. I saw them swimming, swimming as a school. Look at these baby shad. That's what's out there. So I'll let you know what these crappies are eating. Another thing I wanted to bring up, I don't want to forget. We always say our crappies biting, or fish in general, but I'm just going to say crappie. Are the crappies biting today? The truth of the matter is, they ain't never biting. I want you to think about that. Crappies ain't never bite. Never. You know why? Because crappies don't bite. They don't have teeth. Now, why is that significant? Okay? Well, the significance to that is that they don't bite. Okay? What they do is they vacuum their food. Like, suck it. But vacuum is a more accurate uh, way. So why is that important? Okay. It's important because the way, that's why I said it's a preference, not so much as a dogma about how you hook your minnow. The hooking of the minnow has more to do with the middle than it does the crappie because of the way that they consume their meal. Okay. So when you hook it in the tail or the eyes, Pound for pound, it, it it's not going to matter too much to the fish. Now, I'm just saying my preference is the tail because of the psychological um, way I'm looking at it. I figure you live longer if it's in your tail rather than your head, okay? But on the note of how the, the crappie consumes his meal as it applies to the hook, here's when they vacuum it in, the water, the, the debris, the hook, everything goes in, and they, they, they funnel the water out through their gills. Everything they don't want, they funnel it out through their gills or they spit it back out. Then they'll consume the fish whole all the way down. When that's happening, that's, that's what's happening when your bobber is going, slowly going down. Or it may just gump down because they, I mean, they vacuum it, they vacuum it up. So the hook and everything is going. Like I said, I just prefer my hook to be going in along with the fish when he vacuums it because it's gonna, it should get farther down um, its throat or it's a longer indicator. My alert, my alert system is longer with it than the tail because as soon as he starts vacuuming, my bobber is gonna start moving to the side. That's why sometimes you have to wait. If you ever notice. If you ever notice that sometimes you pull your pole too quick, it's like, oh, man, what, I mean, what, what did I do wrong? It's because you haven't allowed it to go all the way down. Now, some people, that's why some people would dispute the way I do it. They would say, see, that don't happen to me because it's hooked in his head. That's true. The only difference is you got to be quick draw. You got to be quick on the draw when it's in their mouth because in their head because of that. Because of that, they are, they are alert to it. So if they they can spit it out, if it don't hook them, it, because you're dealing with water, this is not just like throwing a, a a hook in the air and and it hooks on a stick or something. This is in the water, so it, it it's it's floating. Okay, it's it's moving. So it's no guarantee you're gonna hook them either way like that. You have to be on it and consistent about the way you hook in your bait and about the way it's going to react based on the way it's hooked. And based on the way the fish that you are trying to catch consumes its meal. Speaking of which, for the change, I want to talk to you about spawning, okay? But not spawning crappies, spawning minnows, okay? Minnows typically spawn around April. The weather has been crazy, and um, so they have not been on a consistent pattern, just like the crappie has not been on a consistent pattern this year either. Now, what I like to do 
is find out if you're getting your bait from a bait shop, ask them where they get their minnows from. Okay, ask them where they get them from. And if they tell, like say for instance, see I get mine from a wholesaler, so I know exactly where they're coming from. Why is that significant? I'm going to tell you why. Because spawning minnows die fast. Oh my God. Oh my God. They die so fast. If you see a minnow and you see it's kind of look, got a little belly on them or a little, um, it's kind of fat when they're supposed to be like the slender and they're kind of fat or even ask them, are they spawning? Are they, are, are they spawning right now? With you, okay. That don't mean don't get them. It just be be mindful that your mental could be sitting out there dead as a doorknob. And that's why you, you, you're figuring you're not getting any bites or any vacuums. <laughs> okay. The reason why they're not vacuuming that mental up is because that mental is dead as a doorknob and they're not going to mess with it. Okay. Look at here, I want to show you right now. Look at all of them right there. I hope you can see that. So, you want to make sure that temperature is 50 to 60 degrees, 50 to 56 degrees. If it gets hotter than that, they'll start dying. You want to keep them cool. But if, if you're keeping them too cool, like far as minnow, I told you about the water bottles. Be careful with the water bottles. I, I meant to say this because you don't want to transition them into 50, 40 degree water and then drop them into 75 degree water. You want to kind of ease them in there. That help, that makes them die too. So if you, the, the common reason why your minnows die is shock factor and coming from one temperature and then going into another. Um, so you want to be mindful uh, of those things. Um, the, the temperature um, try to ease them into the temperature in which they're going to be in rather than shocking them so all right you best believe think about it think about it think about it I'm mean, listen I'm gonna tell you something we was in Houston we was in Houston one of my one of our boys uh, was running track and he made it to the junior Olympics and so forth this was some this was some years ago we almost died down there. You know why? Because we ain't from Houston. 105, 110 degrees kills us. And they down there, I mean, running and turning down water. <laughs> Them kids down there in Houston, they was running in 110 degree weather and talking about I don't need no water. Because they from there. Well, likewise, you take somebody from down south, they go up to Chicago, go up to Milwaukee, Michigan, in the wintertime, you out there, you are, you out there almost in shorts, and they up there talking about, man, it's too cold. You know why? Because they're not used to it. Same thing with the minnows. Same thing with the minnows. So just be mindful of that. Uh, a lot of, sometimes it ain't nothing you can do about it. You, you just need an explanation of why it's happening. Let that settle in for a second. A lot of sometimes it ain't nothing you can do about it. You you just need an explanation of why it's happening. Let that settle in for a second. I knew they had emailed me something. I talked to Eric. He said him and he was getting ready to go. So I told him I would send him send him something. I knew they he That's a bluegill, male bluegill. Right. I had a rock bass just hit this, hit a minnow. A big minnow, too. Rock bass, y'all. All right. All right. Hold on. We're going to cut the video 
We got a couple. You local? We're here, about to get the truck out of the mud. We're gonna try. So hang in there with us. We'll be right back. All right. Crappy snipers helping us get our truck out. I got this. This random guy is doing this out of the kindness of his heart. Like he doesn't have to be doing this, but it's pretty great. Appreciate it a lot. We we're just out here playing in the mud and got stuck. He just got this truck today. Crappy Town USA, baby. Crappy Town USA, baby. Sign it off. Making our way. That's how it is in the country. But it taught me something. I tell you what, I'm gonna have to keep that tow rope in the truck. Cause ain't nothing like getting stuck and uh, can't get out.